Hey friend, it's Femke here, product designer, and today I want to walk you through a case study that I haven't really shown before. In May of 2020, I started working on a really big project during my time at Uber Eats on the merchant team, and this project ultimately ended up essentially being stories in the Uber Eats app. I know, it might be shocking. We're seeing stories in so many different apps today and when we started out on this project, we didn't actually think we'd end up creating stories. It took us about six months to execute on this project and build an MVP, which we tested in Australia in December of 2020. And then in about May of 2021, we rolled this out in the US and Canada. So I thought it would be interesting to kind of walk you through it and show you this project from behind the scenes or from the perspective of the designer who worked on this. Let's jump into Figma. Before we continue, a special thanks to Editor X for supporting this video. Editor X just recently launched multiplayer collaboration and concurrent editing. This means you have a fully collaborative web creation experience where you can design websites together with your team by working on the same site at the same time. When collaborating, everything is done in real time, which means changes that you or a teammate make are reflected instantly. You can edit the layout, design, and content of pages or elements without overriding anyone else's actions. Editor X also lets you set different roles and permissions, which lets everyone focus on what they need. And lastly, you can also build a reusable collection of typography themes, color palettes, and design assets for every project and share them with your team. Try Editor X for free via the link below. Here we are in Figma and here is the title slide that kind of sets the scene for this project. So Merchant Stories was all about empowering merchants to connect with their customers. And I'm gonna dive into that in a second. So this presentation always starts with a bit of background and specifically I gave shout outs to all of the people that worked with me on this project. I've blurred their names out here just to protect their privacy. They might not necessarily want to be shout outed on YouTube, but here is a list where I had the product manager, the content strategist, the researcher, all of the engineers, data science, product operations, product marketing manager, illustrator, so many people that ended up working on this project. And so I always like to give credit to the folks on the team that worked with me on my projects. And that is what this slide was for during my presentation. Okay, let's get into the meaty part of this project. So problem context. This was the key problem statement that we came up with during this project. So while merchants do everything in their power to communicate directly with their customers, they have few ways to currently do so on Uber Eats. So we think back to like Uber Eats a year ago in the middle of 2020 when everything was crazy and there were many fires burning. A lot of restaurants pivoted to online food delivery because they could no longer serve indoors or like through their actual restaurant. So while they pivoted to this online only environment, we found that merchants felt like their transactions with customers were just that, very transactional. They wanted more ways to connect with their customers. They were no longer sort of getting that face-to-face -face time like you would if people were dining indoors. So they really wanted more ways to connect and to communicate to their customers. So maybe they wanted to communicate things like welcoming a new staff member to their team or new store hours or a new menu item or maybe they're supporting a cause or a charity or it could be any kind of message. Think about things you might see from your favorite restaurants on Instagram or on Facebook. They wanted to be able to communicate those kind of messages through Uber Eats. Next, if we think about from the customer perspective, so as someone who is ordering food off the platform, they had no real way of knowing what was going on with their favorite stores. And I, for one, experienced this problem heaps myself when I would be looking at a favorite store of mine on Uber Eats and I would actually go and flick over to their Instagram account to kind of get a sense of what was going on at the store and if there were kind of any latest updates or things I should be aware of. So if a merchant had something like a promotion, new menu item the customer had to first of all open the app in uber eats and kind of look for that store but secondly they wouldn't really get that kind of information now from the merchant perspective like i already talked a little bit about they want a way to connect with their customers so Merchants are more than just a storefront, right? They are running a business and they want to connect more with their customers. They want to share their story. They want to build relationships. To them, it's not just this transactional 
order food, you know, get the food out the door, deliver the food and move on to the next customer. They really wanted a way to share news, share updates about their business with their customers and connect more on a one-to-one level. Now, this is funny because we had started to see merchants kind of hacking the platform to share updates. And in my presentation internally, I had a screenshot of that happening here and I've removed that just for YouTube purposes. But basically, we saw merchants finding really creative ways of kind of communicating updates or telling their story through the uh, parameters or the limitations of the Uber Eats app. So if you can imagine, maybe they would sort of create a menu item, but it wasn't actually a menu item. They just kind of use that to share their story or like talk about something in the menu item description. So we'd seen really creative ways of merchants already trying to do this on our platform. So we knew that there was potential here and that this was something that merchants really needed and wanted. Next is a how might we statement. So how might we increase customer demand via this kind of connection between merchants and customers? while also curating relevant and timely content. So we wanted to increase demand. That was kind of our goal going into this project. And we included this kind of second line here on curating relevant and timely content because of course we wanted to be able to show content that was relevant to a customer that they would be interested in. And that was kind of timely and in the moment, right? Like you don't wanna see information about a promotion that expired last week. So this was important to consider as well. The next section goes into defining success. And I already talked a little bit about the overall goal or the metric that we wanted to measure with this project, which was kind of increased demand on the platform. But in this section, I also walk through four kind of key principles that we came up with during this project and that we felt were really, really important to state. The first is around customer control. So we wanted to make sure that customers have control over who they receive updates from and when. We didn't just want to kind of spam all of the users on Uber Eats and show them updates and content from restaurants that they don't really care about. Next was around spamming, so kind of related, but making sure that we're respecting the attention of customers by controlling the volume of messaging and the frequency. So you don't wanna always see that as the first thing every single time you open your app. So making sure that the frequency is kind of controlled. A human touch, this was a really, really important one because we wanted to give merchants a way to express their brand, tell their story. We didn't want it to be tone deaf or robotic kind of messaging. So content should be flexible and to be able to support brand expression from our merchants. And lastly, easy to create. Uh, Merchants are often really, really busy. They are running their own restaurants. They are trying to get orders and deliveries out the door. So we wanted this to be a really easy to create experience, but also provide them with programmatic options so that they don't need to create content on their own all the time if they don't want to. Okay, so these were kind of the four key principles that kind of ended up turning into product requirements. So you see the principles here on the left-hand side and kind of the product requirement that came out of that. So for example, our principle around not spamming, our requirement ended up being grouping content together to avoid sending one-off updates. So you can kind of read through the product requirements we ended up here. However, there was one really big open question we had at the time and it was whether we should couple this experience with favorites. So in Uber Eats today, you can favorite a restaurant by tapping on the heart icon and that will kind of add it to your favorites in Uber Eats for quick and easy access. So we were thinking, should we kind of couple this experience with favorites so that when you favorite a store, you see the updates from that store or should it be a decoupled experience where you have to opt in a different way to get communications and updates from your favorite stores? Well, eventually we decided, yes, we should probably couple the experience and not have a separate kind of opt-in experience to get these communications from your favorite stores. So we came up with two content types, programmatic and custom. So as I talked about earlier in the principles, we wanted to allow merchants to have a form of brand expression, to share their own updates and whatever content they would like to communicate to their customers. So that's why we have support for custom content and here's some examples of what they might share. But then we also wanted to support merchants who are maybe just really busy. They don't have time to log in and create this kind of custom content. So we also wanted to support programmatic kind of content where we'll automatically generate the content on behalf of the merchants. And here's kind of a list of some of the different kinds of programmatic content we decided we would create on the merchant's behalf. All right, now we're getting into kind of like the meaty design part of the project. 
always the favorite part, which is exploration. So at this stage, we didn't know we were going to do stories in the traditional sense of stories. We had these product requirements. We kind of knew where we were going and what we wanted to do, but we had a few different ideas on how to execute on this problem statement and provide a product solution. So the first exploration we had was around push notifications. And initially we thought that this project would just be push notifications. Maybe we'd let merchants author and send push notifications through Uber Eats to their customers. Maybe we'd send programmatic push notifications. So this was an avenue that we explored in the beginning, but kind of quickly realized that this is a very, very loud channel. Not all customers have push notifications turned on and there are already a lot of push notifications being sent by Uber Eats. And so this could kind of get lost in that noise. The next was around potentially letting merchants have sort of like a status update on their storefront. So in this case, you can see here is a design exploration of like this week's hot item. Like maybe they can provide, it's almost like a tweet on their storefront or this one here is a little bit more embedded, kind of like a message coming from the store. So this is something else we explored, but felt like it wasn't super scalable, wasn't really in context uh, and was also so embedded on the storefront that, you know, you had to go to the store to see the status update. So it was kind of a little bit too hidden and too embedded down into the storefront level. We also thought about more contextual notes, so sort of tying these kind of updates to specific items. But again, what if the content is not about a particular item? Maybe they want to share, I don't know, their updated store hours or something. So this was a little bit too contextual as well. And then lastly, we thought about stories. Like what if we did do stories? We kind of leaned into that with like no barriers and just kind of went really far and really wide and crazy thinking, what would stories look like on Uber Eats? I think another benefit of this is that it's a very familiar pattern. You've seen stories in many of your favorite apps. It's engaging, it works. We did a lot of explorations on what stories could look like. Here is just like a very brief snapshot. I think we did like over a hundred different visual designs and visual explorations of stories. So next, going into some more refined designs. So we knew we wanted to do stories. Now we were like, okay, how do you get to stories? Like what's the entry point? What's kind of the experience? We knew that we wanted to have an entry point into stories on the feed. So as you open your Uber Eats app and you're kind of browsing and kind of trying to decide what you want to order. We wanted to make sure that there's an entry point to stories there so that restaurants can create their, their content that they want to share with their customers and that's visible from the feed. So here are kind of the final designs of seeing stories from your favorites. We ended up going with this carousel sort of approach and this kind of preview of the story on the feed where you could sort of start to see already the content of what the story was about but you could also tap into the story to kind of see it in that full screen mode which I'll show you in a second and then we also wanted to make sure there wasn't really a dead end so the stories are currently ranked in the order of kind of your favorite stores. So stores that you've ordered from or favorited before. But once you start to run out of those, we didn't want the experience to kind of just end. So then we start adding on showing stories from stores nearby. So in your local neighborhood, or maybe they're like local favorites. So this we called like a transition card to transition you from stories from your favorite stores to stories from stores nearby. We also wanted to make sure that there is an entry point into viewing these stories from the actual storefront. So if you went directly to a store and that store had a story that was active, that was unread, you could actually view that story from the storefront itself. So the current implementation is this little notification that shows you there's kind of something unread and then from there you can view stories. This is what the full screen story ended up looking like. We had two different kind of designs depending on if it's custom content created by the merchant or programmatically done by Uber Eats. Then we also started expanding these stories into different campaigns. So for example, the Pride campaign that we had earlier this year, we used stories to kind of communicate some of our own sort of branding messaging around Pride, but we also let merchants opt in to sort of being part of that campaign as well. So merchants could opt in to the Pride story campaign and then they could sort of 
share their own sort of custom content or messaging around pride. And we would kind of group and bundle all of those pride stories together. Okay, so here's a few examples of some of the custom content that merchants were creating. There, there's like thousands of these. It was so humbling and cool to see how merchants were using stories and the kind of messages that they were sharing on the platform. I picked these four because I thought that they, you know, represented different kinds of updates. So there's ones around supporting small businesses or like people thanking their customers support during COVID. Here they're like promoting some of their menu items. Here they're sharing more about their philosophy or their story. Uh, here's like a little bit about the sort of story behind some of the ingredients or the food. So there's obviously so much potential. They can share any kind of story they want. And it was really cool to kind of see the different things that they were sharing. Okay, and to show you a little bit what the experience is for merchants to create these stories. So that's another part of the experience I had to design. So this is the existing kind of um, merchant manager desktop tool that merchants go in to manage their store on Uber Eats. And we have an existing marketing section. And so we decided to add this experience into the marketing section as a you know, different way that merchants could market their store on Uber Eats. And so here they can sort of add in their custom content and we show them a preview of what they will look like in the app. And the last section is on results. And I have blurred out the numbers here, but I always like to end all of my case studies, as I've mentioned before, on sort of key impact or like business impact and results. And so here I'm kind of showing the incremental impact of this project. So the first metric is showing the percentage increase in orders per customer. And then the second one is showing the percentage increase in all orders across the Uber Eats platform. So these were pretty awesome, impactful metrics. As you can see, they were positive. So this project ultimately did have positive impact and positive, positive lift on orders on the platform, both for Uber Eats and for individual merchants. So TLDR, merchants who are creating these kind of stories are seeing more orders on the platform, which is really, really awesome. Okay, and that was sort of a behind the scenes look at creating stories on Uber Eats. Uh, I know stories are very controversial. It's like every time stories gets added to a product, they kind of get dragged for it. And I was like really mentally preparing myself for that when this feature launched. But actually I found that people have been like kind of supportive of this feature and think it's really cool and a great initiative for our merchants. So that makes me proud, that makes me happy. And if you're in the US or Canada, open your Uber Eats app and see if you can spot this feature. If you're looking for some mentoring on how to kind of level up in your career and get more guidance, help and support, I'm available for mentoring sessions over on Superpeer. Feel free to book a session with me there. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.